So welcome back, uh, those of you who have been here for two days, and those of you who are new to this class today on the third day, welcome you as well. Today we are going to talk about platforms. So that's where what in USA we say, the rubber is the road. So for two days, I gave some background, some context, lots of concepts, new ideas, new thoughts, some technological guests were discussed yesterday. And which was the, the most intense from a technology point of view. From today, we find it really easy now, but from here until next week. So today, I'm going to talk about what platforms are there, <coughs> which you can use platforms and some languages from programming point of view, design application, or to play with applications. That's my concept today. Lecture number three, we have here, we have three lecture three, blockchain platforms, and I have focused upon not all the platforms, because there are many of them, and, and time is not enough to talk about all of them. But I'm going to talk about Ethereum, or Hyper, Hyper, Hyper Major, and talk about some other things like a multi-chain, open-chain, hyper-chain, there are all kinds of names are, you know, new names basically. There are different kinds of platforms with different flavors. So each of them has their own unique flavor uh, by including some or adding some. Uh, so that's what they are. Uh, let's see if this works, this works here. But before we go and dive deep into platforms, I will be being mischievous here by using the word hash in the title. Uh, let's rehash to recap where we are. These are less than 15, less than 20 words. Uh, I want to the screen to persist for a couple of seconds so you can you can relate to them again. We, we talked about Satoshi Nakamoto, talked about Bitcoin, decentralized laser, blockchain, trustless <coughs> consensus, uh, anonymous anonymity, we talked about that. Hash algorithm, we talked about that. And what we are using in Bitcoin, for example, SHA 256, we talked about that. Immutability, uh, we talked about that. Miners, mining, mine, we talked about that. And I hope all of you know what they are or what they do. Uh, nonce, nonce is a little confusing word. And, and I think yesterday or on Monday, I was going to may confuse you as well. In, in nonce confuses me big time. Okay, so I'm sure it may confuse some of you as well. Once, once is the keyword this is there. Forget about n. Uh, once means that which is used only once for the particular purpose only once. But n with nonce throws me off all the time basically. So it's not not once, it is once uh, as a mnemonic device basically. Ethereum. Uh, puzzle friendliness, collision free, uh, cryptography, hiding, hyperledger, secure, all these words, I hope that you have got idea about all of them to some extent. Anyone with any doubt with any word here before I go to the platform? Any any doubt, any question? Hyperledger. Hyperledger, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good leading question. Hyperledger like Ethereum. It's also a platform, and we'll talk about that today. In fact, after one or two slides, anyone any doubt about any word here? Because that's a critical to understand each word here to some extent before we move ahead. So stop me now, okay? Anyone? Any question, guys? Immutable. Immutable. Something which can't be changed. That's called immutable. Or to change something is almost impossible. A big pen in the back, pen in the neck. That's not immutable. No. Uh, just example, most of man-made laws are, are changeable, but God-made laws are immutable. So I'm not I'm not comparing law to the God, but that's the meaning of that. So I was going to ask you also, can you tell me why is what is minus? Okay, good. I'm glad you asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. So very simply, the miners are the people with access to big computing power. 
and there they, what they do they try to solve the cryptographic puzzle and once they solve the cryptographic puzzle the desired target value of the hash the four zeros or eight zeros in the leading or tailing or whatever right then then they get rewarded basically for the effort they have done they have made they've solved the puzzle and they are called miners and mining is a process of solving the cryptographic puzzle clear thank you i'll say it again last chance or last call any anyone any lack of clarity about any term here on this slide okay so i'll take exam as i said there's no exam no quizzes next week i will test you guys out <laughs> good so let's go back go here now this slide is very busy from a definition point of view so since today i'm going to talk about platform a platform we will ask you what is a platform you know, we talk about programming language, we talk about technology, we talk about all kinds of stuff. But how platform is different from a programming language or a product or, or something else, basically. So you can read the top paragraph yourself, basically, because you get the PDF file as well from Anand Pandey. <coughs> a platform is the way I define it, and this is not my definition, this is someone else's. That's why I put the quotation mark, basically. A platform is a system using which you can develop many different kind of products applications. Basically. So platform in the architecture is horizontally very wide. Here to there, I can design vertical applications or vertical products all standing or sitting on the same layer. And that layer is called platform basically. If you want to go some of the stuff here, platforms are structures that multiple products to be built, that allows, enables multiple products, applications, services to be built within the same technical framework. Okay? Now, it is such a broad definition that you can call Windows as a platform, even though Windows is a operating system, basically. Even Apple iPhone. You can call it a platform, even as a phone, iPhone. But some people say, oh, I can write applications on iOS, an iOS iPhone, for example, and Android as well, right? So, platform is a very, very broad world, but what it does, it makes life easier, not easy, but easier for developers. A, a thick, broad layer of technology has already been architected for you to use basically. So your focus can be or should be just on the application itself. Don't have to worry about the layer, which is handling lots of other activities and you don't need to burden yourself. So that's platform in a, in, a, in, a, in a broad way, in a very simple way. I've given examples here. Let's take some of the examples, not all of them, okay? Examples. There are technology platforms. For an example of that, AWS. I assume that all of you know what I've heard about what AWS is, right? Amazon's web services also, right? Azure, I'm sure you guys know that as well, right? Google has its own as well, right? Computing platforms. I mentioned earlier iOS, Android, Windows. So they are not technology platforms, they are classified as computing platform, they are very close to the hardware side. You know. Then uh, utility platforms, Google search. Someone can argue that Google search is also a platform. Someone may say, no, it's not a platform, it's a utility. But I'm saying enough so that you can, for yourself, you can debate in your own, own mind and decide. Interaction networks, Facebook. Facebook is not a computing platform, nor a technology platform, nor a utility platform. Facebook is interaction network platform, so to speak. So these are you know, types of platforms, uh, marketplaces, Amazon, buy, sell, eBay, auction, Airbnb, you guys know about Airbnb? Yeah. They are 
मार्केट प्लेस इन दिस इंडिया ऑन डिमांड सर्विस प्लेटफॉर्म इन इंडिया ओला ऊबर इन इंडिया इज वेल राइट इन एग्जांपल ऑफ ऑन डिमांड सर्विस आई वांट समथिंग आई एम कॉलिंग समवन आई सेंड एन ईमेल टू समवन एंड देन आई गेट दैट सर्विस डिलीवर्ड टू मी सो दिस थिंग ओके सर्विस ऑफ प्रोडक्ट व्हाट एवर कंटेंट क्राउड सोर्सिंग प्लेटफॉर्म यूट्यूब ट्रिप एडवाइजर the content outsourcing platform like our video is getting taped or getting made every day and our friend uh, puts on the community basically so data harvesting platform okay they they to, to harvest data to get data like inside sales for example is a good example of data harvesting a content distribution platform google adsense google makes lots of money by uh, by ads and all those stuff right So, AdSense, for example, is a content distribution platform, and this the picture was taken from this URL. So once you get the PDF file, you can go to that link and you can study more on your own. Now, my young friend here asked me what is hyperledger. Uh, these are some of the major platforms. For blockchain application development, I'm going to share today or talk about that today. Hyperledger, given what is hyperledger fabric, we will talk about hyperledger fabric as well. But again, it's from hyperledger. Yes. You then there is an Ethereum platform. We have talked about that. I'm going to talk about in detail today what you can do using Ethereum platform. And who invented that guy? We never talked about that young man at all. We talked about Satoshi, but we never talked about the guy who did uh, Ethereum. We are going to talk about Open Chain, Hydra Chain, Big Chain Database, or DB, uh, Corda. These are the kind of top five, six platforms right now. And when you get enough inspired after I am gone from here, and you want to do your own application, you can spend. Lots of time to choose the right platform, because if you choose the wrong platform, that might limit you from some of the possibilities you might have in the application. So if you spend lots of time, lots of thinking, what platform is good for your application? Because for some app, one is good; for some other app, other is good. You have to figure it out yourself, basically. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six. I choose them six major ones and top ones, so to speak, in my opinion, top ones to expose those to you guys. Okay? Hyperledger. Get a prize for asking what is hyperledger. It is a consortium to advance open source blockchain technology. It's a consortium of many companies, uh, global companies, to advance open source blockchain technology. Like not technology, but technology. Led and hosted by Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is a well-known foundation. I'm sure many of you have heard about that as well. So they lead this and they host Hyperledger. More than 20 corporate members it has today. As of last year, not today, but as of last year, more than 130 startup and participants in the ecosystem. The Hyperledger platform has, as of last year, more than 130 startup companies which are a part of the ecosystem of Hyperledger. Just imagine, such a short time, things have mushroomed everywhere. Basically, initial focus for Hyperledger was. It may still be, by the way, finance, the like fintech, uh, healthcare, supply chain, supply chain, including supply chain financing as well. So it's a fintech decision. Enterprise focused software solution. So hyperledger, if you can see, corporate membership is there. So their focus is to sell something to other companies. So this open source blockchain technologies they are trying to promote is more geared towards enterprise focused IT solution or enterprise focused solution. And lastly, but not the least, hyperledger fabric 
the private network play with plug and play. Example, IBM also offers hyper laser fabric. And you guys can study that, what they offer, what are the properties of the stuff, and what you can use if you decide to use IBM fabric, basically. Right application. Clear so far? Any questions, guys and ladies? So yes, some of the some of the companies, the corporate entities, uh, major hyper laser member companies. I mentioned earlier, there are corporate members, and you can see all the big names are here, almost. Uh, Accenture, uh, Daimler, Tati, uh, NEC, uh, IBM, Intel, Cisco, uh, JP Morgan, like all kinds of technology companies, finance companies, or a Chinese company called Baidu. Baidu competes with Google, I think. Not that big a deal, it does. So Baidu is there as well. Do you know what is missing from here? No Indian companies. And as Indian people, we take a vain kind of pride that we are IT powerhouse, IT uh, gurus, IT this, IT that. Not from one Indian company. Where are they? Who is Infosys? Who is Varan Murthy? And other people, where are they? I'm not asking you, by the way, I'm not to some them, but it's, it's certain to me that our, our Amazing technological innovation has happened in the last 10 years, and no Indian companies have put their name in there. None. <coughs> I don't understand why they're putting your eyes or ears. I have no idea at all. Okay? And then we say, oh, Chinese guys are um, uh, making big progress. They will make big progress because they, they are participating in all this new stuff, and we are not. <coughs> I'm not criticizing anyone, but we are a young future of the country. So I have to say this. So, hyper-level leather platform. You can look at this one here. I have uh, listed five of them with their own flavor. So as you select someday your own platform, it's a hyper-leather short tool. It's an example. It's a modular platform. It's a modular, many modules. For building, deploying, and running distributed laser and it includes a novel a new consensus system remember the word consensus trustless consensus we look at the the very fancy name for for the it's not proof of work not proof of a stake not proof of authority guess what proof of last time well, i don't know what it is so i will challenge you guys to figure it out what the detail behind P O E T. So it is very profound, poet, like poet. So they designed their own proof of, of not, proof, not proof of work, but they designed their own way to have a trustless consensus, basically. So these guys did that, which targets a large distributed validator populations. So they're people who validate transactions. They're not designing mining, by the way, they're validating. That this is a good transaction, this is a valid transaction, this is an audit transaction, we are validated. And just remember, hyperlayer is focused on companies, enterprises, enterprise solutions. So it's not a public blockchain. It is in the in the company's four walls, right? So there you don't need a million people trying to mine a solution to solve a puzzle. What we can do. You can appoint a finance chief, or a finance guy, or a accounting person, or IT person to validate transaction, or HR person, a payroll change for, for you. HR person say, I'm the validator by the way. So this is an enterprise solution, so it's not like you buy every time they can have in the office. That's why you will see many of them will have elements which are good for companies not for a global decentralized blockchain chain making sense good other one hyper laser iroha or iroha i don't know how to say that but we can say both ways iroha or iroha is a business blockchain framework designed to be simple and easy to incorporate into infrastructural projects requiring distributed laser technology now everyone claims my stuff is easy Right? So you guys have to find out when you do research what platforms in detail are they really easy? If they are, quite easy. The speed is faster, 
Is the, the scalability higher? Is the cost lower? So you have to ask all those questions basically. Uh, Hyperledger fabric, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, many IBM is, uh, is uh, offering that as well. Uh, it's a foundation for uh, developing application. So they make very easy. So you can say, okay, I won't go here. I will go to IBM Hyperledger fabric. I will use their platform to develop my application. And there's lots of material in books and internet as well. You can really dive deep, deep, deep and say what are the benefits of using a particular platform. So anyway, so I will I will not go through all of them because you will get a copy of this. Talks of your own, you can do research what these things are. You see that. Uh, these are tools now. So earlier we talked about I talked about platform, right? Now, what are the other tools? Because platform is there, you need some tools. For example, you have a wall, you need a hammer to put a nail in the wall. So hammer is a tool, right? Nail is a tool in a way, it is a tool, nail is a means, by the way, to hang a photo or something like that. So these are some of the tools, hyperlink of cello, composer, very fancy names, like composer, you know, like a music, like a poem. Explorer, the, the, the explorer, Word is very used or widely used. So you can see that and look at some of the stuff they are they're talking about. Hyperledger cello, let us say, aims to bring the on demand as a service. So this tool is designed to help you to develop applications which is most suitable for on demand and service. Okay, for example, that's why they have highlighted that. Why I am different? That's my, that's my differentiating factor. That's my differentiation. Uh, I'm very far from the hyperledger explorer, but you guys can read that. Hyperledger quilt offers interoperability between major systems. So you can see, you can have many different kind of major systems from different platforms, different ways, right? Different POWs, POSA, and all the stuff, right? A tool like this ensures that your platform can interoperate with other other platforms, for example. Because in the world, you're not island, you're not alone. You need to talk to someone, some other platform. So you can see that you have you know, four hyperledger based kind of tools to make your life easier. So you have all the hammer, chisel, all the stuff in there so you to do your work. Major features, again, I won't go to all of them because the reading material. Permission network. That word I have not used the last two days. Permission. You will say, what is permission? We never talked about that. So the public blockchain, which is globally available, you don't need anyone's, anyone's permission to join. You become a node in the, in, the, in the network. This one here is good for corporations, companies. You more hyperledger, more focus upon companies, enterprises. So there, companies don't want open access to their confidential information. What do you need there? You need someone to give permission. So you might tell me that, oh, we are going back to the to the free blockchain days, and I why do you need permission? For any application to be successful, to be usable inside the company, you need some control. You, see. you can't have a free for all that anyone can go and log in and start doing what, adding blocks and data and all this stuff. So that's the permission. You will, you will hear, you will, when you read on your own going forward, you have permission and permissionless. Yeah, you see. So these are some of the examples of, of major features. No cryptocurrency. Okay. Hyperledger platform it says no does not require mining and expensive computations. So you can, you can understand now. Don't need mining, you don't need access to high power computers. Right? So so that's a benefit from the inside a corporation point of view. You don't need miners if you're using application inside a company. You need the you need the security of the cryptocurrency, crypto cryptography. You need a cryptographic 
security, but don't necessarily need to, to mine by the way or reward anyone. Okay, so you can, so that's the benefit of that, and program, programmability as well. Now, they said that a video, but I'm not showing the video now. I'll show the video later on. Now, this man I don't talk about yet. Those of you who are 16 years old here, I think some of you may be 16 years old or maybe not, no one is 16 years old here. This guy got involved with Bitcoin when he was 16 years old. 16 years old. He had joined Waterloo in University in Canada. He's a Russian Canadian person, Russian immigrant to Canada. So just imagine, 16, 16 years old kid learns about, hears about Bitcoin. Oh, I don't need to go to school anymore. I'm not teaching to you guys. You guys finish your studies. Okay? <laughs> Parents will be upset. <laughs> so this man, who, I don't know how to pronounce his name the way Russians will pronounce or he pronounces, Vitalik Buterin. Okay? Right now he's 23 years old, not old, young man. He's a 20 years old kid right now. So for the last five, six, seven years, he has been doing this, and then he felt the need with one more, a couple of two of us, two more partners, to design a platform which is not, which can be used to write applications other than Bitcoin. So until he launched Ethereum, Bitcoin was the only application in the whole world. So he felt the need to have a platform and a programming language to go with the platform. So people like you guys who are also 16 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, can design applications. This is what this man did. So Satoshi Nakamoto, everyone knows about him, heard of him. This man is an amazing, amazing young kid. You can see the kid I will probably compared to me and right? Don't worry about that video. There's no video behind that. I included that there to show, to tell you that you can create an Ethereum account. And you can Google how to create an account on Ethereum and start from there. Okay? It doesn't cost lots of money at all. Okay, with a very small amount of money. And they ask you to pay some money, otherwise they don't will join it, right? And why there's a crowd, right? So is how to create an Ethereum account, you can Google it and you can you can play with it or, or have an account as well. So in the in the Bitcoin, as you know, the mining uh, Bitcoins have been mined, right? And the proof of that mining, puzzle solving, has to be presented to the network. <coughs> so people will say, okay, yeah, this is I agree, we have solved it, right? So you look at here, the Ethereum blockchain, instead of mining for Bitcoin, miners work to earn sort of ether, E T H E R. And by the way, Ether, everyone in America, the world talking about Bitcoin's value, how many dollars it has gone. Ether has also snipped up by the way, to hundreds of dollars, which will be very, very small from a dollar point of view. So Ether is their cryptocurrency. It is their native cryptocurrency, and they call ETH. So it's Ether. So you don't say Bitcoin, you say Ether. How many Ethers you have? How many times I transfer to you or him or, or, or her? So that's what I do. But this concept is very same, single concept basically. You call Bitcoin in one application, in one platform, you call it Ether. Okay? So remember, this watch this guy, he will do wonderful things. So to look at it, the very first application I mentioned was Bitcoin, in general, cryptocurrency. Okay? So if you look at cryptocurrency, and the other world I have presented before is altcoins. So Bitcoin was the first application and first cryptocurrency. Altcoins stands for alternative coins. And last time I counted, there are 1,326 altcoins already. And by the way, you can, each of you can mint your own, you can create your own cryptocurrency if you want. By your own name, your father's name, mother's name, brother's name, sister's name, you can do that. 
There are 1,326 cryptocurrencies. Now, as of around two months ago, I counted how many there are. There may be now 1,500, who knows, right? Tokens. I have not used the word token so far, you can call. What is a token? Does anyone know by the way? If anyone knows, raise your hand. What is a token? Like, what is the meaning of token in English language? Anyone know? Okay, let me explain. In the olden days, in the countryside, when I was growing up, someone takes a piece of small piece of gold, goes to the goldsmith, and gives to him. He to keep it. Goldsmith gives a piece of paper, I owe you. The piece of paper is token. <coughs> and that token is backed by an asset called the gold with the goldsmith. So I can take the token from the goldsmith, if I gave you gold, and I can give the token to you, and you become the owner now. The token is something that can be passed around, almost like a currency in a way, it's backed by an asset. Or sometimes a token may not be backed by an asset, it's token. So when I was a student in Patna or IT Kanpur, I used to get a scholarship. And we go to the bank to get the money from the bank, the cash every month. The banker, the cashier those days used to give a token, a metal, a metal, round metal, metal thing. And then I take the token from one counter, go to the other counter to get the cash and give the token. Has anyone done that? By the way, you guys don't don't use tokens anymore. They don't, don't, it's not need anymore, right? I'm sure Raj must have but <laughs> go to the bank to get cash. I'm sure the, the brass, the brass of the thing. So it's called token basically. The token is like that it represents some value in a way. It's used you can't buy and sell, like you can't uh, uh, you know, do that, but you need to, so altcoins and tokens. And someone talked about ask about Ripple yesterday. I mentioned Ripple. You see Ripple here? Ripple is also sneaking up from a value point of view, by the way. They are, they are cryptocurrency, so to speak. And Ripple is different from Ethereum and Bitcoin. Ripple token is backed by asset, underlying asset. Other guys are not backed by underlying asset. No. They're not. Is token Sorry? Is token transferable? Yeah. So just... The, the owner will be changed. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And that's what the example of uh, Goldsmith I gave. If I give the token to you, you can get the Goldsmith to, to claim the gold. And all the picture. In the store your luggage. Correct. In the luggage area, yep. they give you a token. Um, you can't collect your own luggage unless you get a token. Exactly. But you can give it to, to your friend. Yeah. And your friend can collect it. Exactly. Exactly. So it's a token. Mm -hmm. That represents the luggage. Good example. Yeah. Good example. Thank you. Yeah. So, so these are the cryptocurrency type. Okay. Alt clients. There are many of them. You can create your own alt client if you want. Tokens are on the variant, and sometimes people are using alt coins, Bitcoin coins, and tokens interchange everywhere here. There's a subtle difference, but people are using it on the same sometimes. It might be confusing by the way. Please. So, so if it is not backed by any asset, then what is the worth of it? The, the, the worth of it is that it is by itself because it's getting mined, and the mining process is so difficult that it's made a value of it. Like air is freely available, so value is almost zero. Uh, unless we can't breathe by it, then, then we need air, right? So so the whole difficulty, the mathematical puzzle, cryptographic mm -hmm. puzzle to be solved, has made the barrier to entry very high, basically. And that creates value. Second point is scarcity creates value as well. If something is scarce, right? Something uh, then then value is Gold is value, valuable because it's a scale, right? Platinum, same thing, right? So, so that's what you So you can see that. Okay. Uh, you said that Ripple is backed by yeah, an asset. Yeah. So it makes Ripple a token rather than an altcoin. Okay. That's why I warned earlier that some people are using coin and token interchangeably. So, so you have to be careful. And very subtle because look at the coin. Coins also 
you can pass on to other people, right? Token is a little bit the same thing. But token, a coin is a real currency, to, so to speak. Cryptocurrency. No, token is also a cryptocurrency. So, so you know, like the bike, uh, the bike thing, right? Luggage thing, right? So you can just think about that or, or go in the gold field. Uh, this is Ethereum stack, internet layer, Ethereum blockchain layer, geo platform, and application layer. The two layers. Okay. Bitcoin technology stack, and we won't be doing programming on Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the application itself, so you can't create on the Bitcoin. Yet yeah, with two layers, internet layer, Bitcoin blockchain layer, and then the side chains, basically. You have to create them. Okay. Application layer is missing from there, uh, but Ethereum gives that as well. Okay. So if you look at from a platform point of view, more people are using Ethereum right now as the application development platform using a language called Solidity. S O L I D I T Y. Hey, talking about that, some mind uh, mind benders here. I do not go in the code. My intention was just to flash how what the code in that language looks like basically. If you look at the comment uh, comment lines there on the right hand side, and these are the kind of programming commands, so to speak, to do some to do a, a contract in Ethereum platform, a basic crypto token contract. Ethereum we call contract, smart contract, right? Any transaction is a contract to the state. If I mow your lawn, you have agreed to pay me ten dollars every day, you have a contract of some kind. And mow your lawn, it will give you ten dollars. It's a contract. If I put that import that using a Ethereum platform and Solidity programming language, then once the long mowing is done, ten dollars is getting charged to my account automatically. So so this is an example. It's not very difficult because it's like any programming language. And you guys who are doing programming, you will, you will, you will understand that. Another, another example of a piece of real code on Ethereum platform. So real code this is that's how it is done. It's not difficult at all. It's not difficult. You can learn within one week. And it's a couple of days. Okay. Now, how to create your own crypto coin? Some of you might say, oh, what happens if I, I have my Ramesh coin, Suresh coin, Dinesh coin, right? So, I'm going to show the first video of this lecture, and then after that, we'll see the second video as well. So, where is my help? Uh, how can we the know how to? I need to unplug this, right? Okay. So, please, uh, the file has been loaded there. So, please play the first one, and I take it out, right? Take it out. Hey, crypto watchers, and welcome back to the show. In addition to cryptocurrency news, I'm going to start making videos that will show you how to code on. We're going to focus in on Ethereum and smart contracts, and in this episode, we're going to create our own token that you can give to your mom, send to your friends, send to your friends, and even hodl. This coin will be totally useless, but you can still hodl it. Like all my videos, I don't do this in less than five minutes because it's actually really simple. First, let's get the code. In the description down below, you should see a GitHub link. When we click on that, we get to the code repository. So here's the code repository. Next, you want to click on simpletoken.soul. This will be the code that we're going to use to create the token. So next, we go to Mist Wallet. You can use other things like My Ether Wallet or MetaMask, but I use a Mist Wallet because it's developed by Ethereum developers. It's kind of annoying because they require you to download the whole blockchain every time you uh, you like start it up. This should change in the future, but it does kind of suck. I'll also have a link down below where you can download the wallet. If enough people ask me, I can also make a tutorial for that as well. So first when we enter, we're gonna be at wallets. Next we go to contracts. We click on deploy new contract. Click on the correct account that you will be transferring from. So you will need to have somebody turn on this account, probably like $2 worth, because it does take some gas to deploy the contract. Okay, cool. It's so here we click on me, okay? Solidity contract source code. You should see some example code here. We want to copy and paste the code from the GitHub into here. So on the right hand side, you can now click on a contract. You're gonna click on simple token. 
now there's going to be some constructor parameters you need to fill out. Uh, for this, we're going to have 1,000 coins. Let's call it Crypto Watchers token. Uh, let's do no decimal units. And the token symbol can be CTW. Uh, for a fee, I'm going to make it less than $2. So how do we make our own token basically? This should be approximately one dollar something. One dollar fifty cents. Okay, cool. It says my transaction will be likely mined in within a few minutes, so that's good enough for me. So this requires you to you can always change the maximum fee in here. So I'm just gonna change it to five eighty two. Because that's the estimated heat consumption. And then here I will do so this requires you to put in a password as well. So if you click on the wallet that you use, you should be able to see the status here. A few inches later. Okay, great. So now if you go click on the account where you use to create the contract. You should be able to see your token and the amount that you create. Okay, cool. So now you can send this token to whoever you want. You just put in their address in the to field and then the amount in the amount field. Remember to hit Crypto Watchers token or whatever your token is called. You can also change the fee. You will still be paying Ether fee because the miners still have to get paid. So that about wraps it up. I hope you learned something. You can now create a coin using the code that I made in the future. So this guy decided in a couple of minutes created his own token, his own cryptocurrency. It's as simple as that guy. Okay? So let's uh, let's watch the, the second video. Thank you. Hi there, it's Lee here from My Mind Blocks. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a brand new Ethereum wallet using MyEtherWallet.com. So MyEther Wallet is one of the easiest ways that you can set up a brand new Ethereum wallet. And in this video, I'll be showing you the process from start to finish, how to set up a wallet, create it, save your files uh, securely and safely. Um, also the basics of sending and receiving transactions. So let's get started with that now. Okay, so I'm on the Mac here, but the process can be very similar whether you're using Mac um, or Windows for most people. Uh, the only uh, slight exception is that on the Mac, I'm actually going to be using the Chrome browser, not the built-in Safari browser. The uh, reason being is there's a slight um, issue when you're actually downloading your sort of JSON wallet file. So I'm actually going to be using um, Chrome and I'll just help us get through the, uh, the initial setup process. You can actually use Safari after you've created the wallet, um, but the actual download process is not not very good. Um, so on Windows you might want to use Firefox or something and we'll get the same uh, results. So from Google we're just going to go to myethawallet.com so just confirm it's the correct address so obviously it's a secure address HTTPS and it's myethawallet.com uh, only use that site don't use um, any other sites. So on the first part, you've got this new wallet, and this is the default page that the actual uh, website opens up as. And then you can enter a password. So you want to choose something uh, unique and secure with multiple characters, numbers, and um, also special characters as well as useful. Um, and you also want to make a record of this uh, password also, because it's going to be used for actually unlocking your wallet in combination with a file. So for this one, I'm just going to use a very simple password. I'm just going to use password 1234. Uh, that's all I'm going to use for it. So, obviously, it's just a demo account. I'm not going to be using this and what it, you know, in real life. For you guys, make sure it's a secure password and only to yourself. What I'm also going to do is actually just open up. Just going to open up Notepad and uh, also record these details. Go back to the browser now. So if you click on the create new wallet button, uh, we then set up password and save it. 
You now have the option to download the actual Keystore file. So the Keystore file is effectively your Ethereum wallet, and it includes the information um, about the actual wallet itself, uh, the, the address, etc. So what we should be able to do is uh, click on this and actually download a, uh, the Keystore file itself. So you can see it's just downloaded there, and most likely it will be in your uh, downloads folder. So I'm going to actually uh, click on the button and then say show in Finder. And you can see it's actually saved the downloads. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is just go and drag it across. I'm just going to place it on the desktop the first one being. And I'll return back to the actual browser. So it just uh, reminds you to keep a copy of your keystyle file and also your password. You can also uh, record the private key as well, which we're going to do uh, next. So this is your private key. But with this private key, you can use to uh, restore your Ethereum wallet if you've uh, lost your um, a key store file itself. So this is uh, very important. You don't want to be sharing this with uh, anybody um, at all. And just keep your private and to yourself. Very important, guys. I'm also going to paste this into the uh, text pad. Uh, it's also worth taking note, so what each part is, because sometimes the addresses, I think, get a little bit confusing. And also, I don't know the bottom, I'm still going to the actual address. Uh, also, I'll, uh, I'll cover towards the actual end of the video how to sort of um, save all this securely. Um, in the next section. So you can either print here or we just click on next with uh, we've already saved it. Okay, so that's the actual wallet creation part itself. The next part is actually um, not logging in, um, accessing your wallet itself. So when you first come to my e wallet, I'll just go back to the beginning. So what I wanted to show you in the previous uh, video, you saw the two, two videos or uh, part of the video, is how easy and how difficult it is to uh, to get a token, your own cryptocurrency, and also how to get a wallet. You need a wallet on the, on the background so that the tokens and each other value and all the stuff. You also heard and saw a new word called gas. Gas is, uh, I don't even know why they call it gas, but uh, the image is how much energy something gets. The gas, you know, how much gas you have in the car. And so those young people who designed Ethereum, uh, they choose their own unique words, uh, just called gas. So there's no physical gas anywhere, by the way. So we'll come to some other video in the end. So ether, ether is the, the fee. When you buy, you pay money to buy ether, and, and that is it's in your account. So if you burn all the money you have in your wallet, then you buy some more. And what they do, they allow you to do work on the platform based upon how much. You tell your boss for this. Again, it's not very expensive, by the way. So, if anyone wants to play and understand and get their hands wet, we call it feet wet, but you can't get your hands wet by programming, log on to them, find out how to make a wallet, your own wallet, find out how much money they're asking for, or they're asking for one dollar, ten dollar, whatever, and how much one dollar will buy you, or how much work you can do with the one dollar. You will figure it out and learn. It's not very expensive at all. This is uh, affordable by almost anyone who's coming to IB Garden Network. So I want to show some of the things you might be uh, uh, wondering, you know, hyperledger, <coughs> and the, um, the, this way. In the previous video, they created a crypto wallet directly, but still dependent on Ethereum. Correct. So what, but can it not be independent? Can you not put dollars and get a crypto wallet? 
I showed Ethereum platform, that's when I did it on Ethereum. Okay. In that in that environment. You can't get some other cryptocurrency. It is their their platform. That's not me. So Hyperledger and Ethereum, they are the two major platforms. That's why I decided to put something here. And the only one question, please. To the point that you create on the Ethereum platform, it can have an independent value from the Ethereum platform. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they can be more expensive than the Ethereum platform. But the Ethereum platform gives you the blockchain security. Yeah. Trustless security. Plus the programming language. Plus the programming language. Mm -hmm. And they charge you every time there's a transaction that you do on yeah. and use the Ethereum platform. Correct. Yeah. When the gas is done, yes. you run out of gas, then you use up your two dollars. Exactly, you fill the tank again. You fill the tank. Fill the tank again. So there are, there are, so I don't want to talk about every word here on the chart, but there are two pointers. So another new word, uh, you will see tactical Byzantine fault tolerance. PBFT. PBFT. Okay. Uh, so if you look at hyperledger fabric, and look at the consensus point of view, that's the method they're using to reach a consensus. And what is PBFT in detail, the more in detail, I will let you read, read that, because time is not sufficient for me in two weeks to go through every, every uh, word. Uh, then look at proof of work. Ethereum is still using proof of work. Now, but they're moving towards proof of a stake as well. So we're gonna have two proofs. One one proof of one we talked about, and one proof of a stake. That's what the, the note I made here. And PPFT is used by hyper laser fabric. Uh, the other ones, I had talked about six of them in the beginning, the open chain. So if you look at we talked about yesterday speed. Ten minutes is the is the rate at which a new block is added to the to the Bitcoin chain, so to speak. Right? Look at the claim of open chain. Instant confirmation of transaction. You will like that because you do not wait for ten minutes, right? So there is a platform, or there are platforms which are not bound by the ten minute. Transition time. No mining fee. It's not you don't want to pay money to Ethereum. So there's no no fee. Uh, extremely high scalability. They claim that. I don't know, I have not uh, verified the claim, but, but that's a claim. So you can look at all these things here. Uh, yes, their feature uh, they are talking about. Uh, and, they're, and they're called open chain. Again, it's a platform. So go ahead, please. If there's no mining fee, then what is the uh, motive to make a proof of work and you don't get it? No. Fee is not the same as incentive. Ethereum <coughs> is charging you oh, money, mm -hmm. right? And get, so incentive is different from fee. Fee you pay, and incentive you get. Right here, Hydra chain. Another funny name, Hydra. Hydra is a insect, funny looking thing, right? Hydra. Hydra chain is an extension of Ethereum platform. See, we extended that to add some features and validators who are accountable. Okay, so they don't want. Anyone who is not accountable to validate, because you can have collusion, you can uh, you can validate something if you know someone. So he's the miner, he's my brother, my friend, right? So I agree, he got it. So look at here, first word, accountable, validated. Guys who confirm, guys and girls who confirm that uh, the puzzle has been solved. Instant finality, scalability, proof of identity, transaction privacy, make it contact. 
these are the kind of flame from hydrogen. So we can imagine the extension of ethereum, so it will have lots of ethereum features as well. Another one called big chain DB, right? Look at the claim. One million bytes per second. Very fast, right? They're saying I'm speeding. <clears throat> My transaction rate is, is very fast. It's not every 10 minutes. One million bytes per second. Uh, petabyte capacity. I'm a scalable. The source I can scale up to petabyte. Linear scaling, so you can scale. So scale, speed is what they are, they are, they are advertising or marketing. It's called big chain DB. And you can, you can look at the competitors. We have Bitcoin, we have more big chain DB. They have the features here, and they can get all of them. So when you are choosing your platform, your application, my point is you should look at all the details. You can't just blindly go. So I like a hydra chain. I like open chain. Well, you're not limiting your future of your application. You've got to go to the detail and compare the features, make a table of what you want and what platform hides those things. Only then you choose a platform. Otherwise, you like a blind leading a blind. You see that. Corda. That's O by this Corda, right? They are claiming they're engineered for business. That's why they are for company. Uh, data sharing is restricted. Blockchain allows it anyway, unless you want to share, no one can dig it in anyway. Uh, pluggable consensus. You can plug, they're saying that you can have different consensus mechanisms, you can plug them. So you like proof of work, plug them. Like POS, proof of stake, plug them. Like proof of something else, plug them. So these are like, they're flexible from a platform point of view, they're saying. So they're not married or attached to a particular kind of consensus method. So, these are the six platforms right now. In my view, they are the more popular or powerful or major ones. And every month, every three months, a new thing is coming up because of the fast changing scenario. So keep your eyes and ears open. So don't, don't close them at all because lots of things are moving really, really fast. We might hear some wonderful, a more wonderful platform tomorrow. Uh, so keep it open, basically. Hyperledger project, I say it's a video and the URL is going to be shared as well in the email funded with the same. Uh, but to, to hear some, some part of this. It's great for five minutes, please, or five or six minutes. It gives, uh, gives some idea to you guys. But, uh, oh. Good morning. Um, so, I, I, uh, a blockchain conversation may be a bit of a stretch for 9 a.m., so I hope all of you are caffeinated um, uh, and, and ready to roll. And, uh, to some degree, I'm going to try to answer your questions about what is a blockchain, um, why should you care. Uh, but I also want to talk about what we're building in the project, which is as much about technology as it is about uh, the way that open source communities come together to write code, especially in a part of the technology landscape that is still very unsettled and is still emerging. Um, and before I dive in, how many people here feel like they could do a 140-character tweet explaining what a blockchain is? Okay. Um, uh, so at, at, at the most general level, a blockchain is really a decentralized database, right? It's a way of taking a circle of computers, basically, owned by different people, and publishing to that circle um, uh, 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 information, um, basically entries that get added to a ledger, right? And this is the distributed ledger portion of a blockchain. Um, and then building on top of that uh, to, be, to be able to publish scripts uh, written in a language that is particular to that chain and it's different, differs from all the different implementations out there. Um, but uh, but be, to be able to write scripts and have those scripts execute across all these different nodes. And if they all agree on the outcome, then the next link in that, that entry in that ledger can be written, right? 
So this is kind of cool, and it's something that wasn't invented by Satoshi Nakamoto. This is something that actually goes back uh, to some degree to papers from the 1980s on distributed computing, uh, on, uh, uh, on ways to scale databases to, to much higher levels. Um, but we kind of forgot about it as an industry, as, as, a, as, as academia, until um, Satoshi Nakamoto's paper in 2009 suggesting that you could combine that with a consensus mechanism. Consensus is how everybody in that circle agrees to the next link in the chain, um, to the next entry in that ledger. Uh, uh, and, and his proposal was something called proof of work. And I'm not going to talk a lot about cryptocurrencies in this talk, because to many degrees, Bitcoin and, and even Ethereum are kind of uh, uh, the systems that are about building very large global uh, platforms for distributed computing, in addition to being about cryptocurrencies. And cryptocurrencies have their own political issues, they have their own uh, uh, social issues as well. Um, what Hyperledger was, uh, was started with was this idea that if we could boil down this underlying data structure, this distributed ledger technology and the smart contract platform, uh, and take it to the business world. In fact, many of the people who were involved in, in starting the Hyperledger project came from the, the business community, the banks, uh, the, the, the other technology areas where they felt this need for a very flat, distributed, multi-party database uh, uh, ledger and smart contract system, there was a need for it, and a need that could be separated from the cryptocurrency side in a, in a really interesting way. So that was the genesis for the project. Um, the project actually began with conversations starting about a year ago with organizations like IBM and Wells Fargo and JP Morgan uh, and Intel and others coming to the Linux Foundation saying, there's a need here. There's a need to build uh, uh, technologies that, that uh, focus on this blockchain space uh, that, that help build these, these kind of building blocks for, for building these kinds of systems. And, and when I joined in June, I went out and talked to all of the members of the organization at the time, which was about 40 odd members, uh, and, and said, what, what is the most valuable thing that the Linux Foundation and the Hyperledger Project could do for this, for this community, especially given that um, projects like Bitcoin and Ethereum are pioneering some really interesting things. There's this long tail of a lot of other open source projects. What's the best thing we could do? And, and, and so the goals that we came up with were to build a, a developer-focused community of communities, right? So a collection of different projects uh, to benefit an ecosystem of solutions providers and end users building blockchain technologies. Um, and through, through building these communities, build uh, a family of frameworks, of platforms, and libraries uh, upon which anyone can build and run their own applications. Kind of the open source story, in some ways inspired as much by the Linux Foundation as by the Apache Software Foundation, right? Uh, where, where you find 300 odd, uh, maybe it's even 400 at this point, projects uh, <laughs> ranging from Hadoop and Spark uh, all the way back to the original web server project, um, sitting side by side with healthy communities building technology. Um, we also, as a project, want to make sure that we're involving these developers and service providers and others in, in promoting the software publicly and building a commercial ecosystem on top of it, uh, because that's really how you build resiliency into an open source community. Make sure people can make money with it, right? Make sure that it's something that they can put into practical use uh, and derive some value from, uh, uh, either indirectly as a, as a service provider or buried inside an organization, or even directly as as providing support or, or products based on top of it. And finally, as a project, host the infrastructure for this, not just the mailing list, CDS repository, or Git repositories, and, and, and other things, but also uh, uh, the legal kind of infrastructure that you need. Um, you all know about the Linux Foundation, you know who uh, we are. Uh, you know that in addition to the Linux ecosystem, there's all these additional kind of template communities that have been built, uh, uh, Cloud Foundry, Node.js, um, yeah, Zen, and, and this is what the Hyperledger project is plugging into as a framework. Um, within the Hyperledger project, we've added, uh, 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 we now have uh, over 85 members. Um, this is, I refer to as kind of my NASCAR slide um, of uh, you know, the companies that are supporting this effort. Uh, uh, and supporting uh, means uh, making a financial contribution. It also uh, can mean, I mean, it can mean that it can also mean participating technologically. Uh, uh, in terms of using the code, but also contributing uh, uh, bug reports, contributing enhancements, uh, being a part of the open source project. Not anybody in the world can, obviously, like any with any of the Linux stuff. So you talk about the next, next video. That is on the uh, video, right?
the, the man himself. Thanks to the power of modern communication, we have the ability to create technologies that are decentralized, removing middlemen and allowing users to interact with each other directly through a global network. Decentralized applications have been becoming more and more important in the past 10 years and have the benefits of massively reducing costs and barriers to entry, removing single points of failure, preventing censorship, and ensuring transparency and trust between all the parties involved in an interaction. BitTorrent, a file sharing network developed in the early 2000s, is arguably the first decentralized application to have been created. BitTorrent allows anyone to share any kind of file with anyone else in the world, allowing people to distribute content quickly and easily, even if they do not have the resources to pay for their own website or server. Five years later, Satoshi Nakamoto came up with the idea of a blockchain, a sort of distributed database and use it to build Bitcoin, the world's first decentralized currency. Decentralized currencies like Bitcoin allow people to send money instantly anywhere around the world with no regard for national borders with negligible fees. Bitcoin is increasingly being used for international remittances, micropayments, and commerce online. Uh, decentralized applications for finance, uh, cloud computing, mess messaging, and distributed governance are soon to come. Ethereum is a platform that is specifically designed for people to build these kinds of decentralized applications, or dApps for short. The Ethereum client, which we are calling the Ether browser, will include a built-in peer-to-peer network for sending messages, and a generalized blockchain with a built-in programming language, allowing people to use the blockchain for any kind of decentralized application that they want to create. Ethereum can be used to build financial applications that are fully trustworthy and transparent because they run on the blockchain. Online, cryptographically secure systems for managing property and contracts. Social networking and messaging systems that allow users to maintain control of their own data. Systems for trading underutilized computational resources like CPU time and hard drive space. And eventually tools for online voting and distributed governance. The most exciting applications of Ethereum are probably the ones that we have not even thought of. As with all new platforms for innovation, like the protocols that underlie the internet itself, it is not always easy to predict what they're going to be used for. Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the modern internet as a whole are all a result of uh, early developments in the World Wide Web and JavaScript, the programming language of the World Wide Web, from the 1990s. Similarly, by providing a universal programmable blockchain and packaging it up into a client that anyone can use, the Ethereum project hopes to do the same for finance, peer-to-peer -peer commerce, distributed governance, and human collaboration as a whole. Now the question is, what would you build on top of Ethereum? We uh, saw that video of uh, Mr. Sam Hickory himself. Uh, he was uh, able to get one more video. You can watch the video on your own as well. The next video is how to build a smart contract using the uh, Ethereum. That might be going down a bit deeper from a technology and programming point of view. So I will. Uh, ask you to watch that video on your own and you could see it deeper and may not be interesting to everyone here. Uh, there's another homework uh, I'm going to give to all of you. Uh, I want you guys to, to find out what are the top three best platforms. I've already given some, some talk on that. And to develop decentralized application. What are the top three? You don't have to tell me. There's no exam, no quizzes. But I want you guys to, to spend time and think about it. Uh, search and watch YouTube lectures on open chain, hydra chain, Coda, BitChain, BB, all this stuff. Because Hyperledger, Ethereum, already showed that. Some, some snippets. 
You can watch the whole video uh, when you get some time. And learn more about a smart contract. What is a smart contract or what are smart contracts? And I'll encourage you to, to play with uh, your own wallet. It's not very expensive. So make your own wallet. Uh, keep your own uh, native uh, cryptocurrency for that own uh, uh, platform or application. And create uh, and play with it, basically. Uh, it's a software. There's no hardware required. You already have the hardware, by the way. Laptop, top, Macs, or, or Windows machines. So open them up and uh, and start playing with it and see where you go. And tomorrow, uh, we'll talk more about innovation opportunity. So what what things can be possibly done, and then use case innovation point of view, using the platforms we have talked about, and the technology we have talked about. At this point, I will, I will stop the lecture, and uh, I'm going to open up for any quick Q and A kind of session. So, anyone has any comments, any questions? Let us talk about that. Our lecture part is done. This evening.